Master Gardeners, it's natural, National Invasive Species Awareness Week. So my feature plant is the plant that's behind me. Every elementary school kid, if you ask, ask them the name of plant, this is one they'd name. Ivy, right, heterohelix, known for its glossy evergreen foliage. What's interesting to gardeners is it comes in two forms. We have the traditional vine that we buy, comes in all different kinds of variegated colors, golden and all. They're all considered invasive species because they revert back. But it also comes in an adult form and it becomes very woody. And the plant, the foliage still looks very similar to an ivy in its adult form, but it's woody. It becomes a four foot tall, four foot wide shrub. But the difference is the adult foliage doesn't have the lobes on it like the juvenile foliage does. It just comes up to a tapered point. So that's the difference between juvenile and adult. And when it becomes adult form, it goes into flower and then it produces a seed, which is double trouble because then the birds are invited in. So we'll go around here and we'll look at some of this mature. And you know how this plant got here? It's not native. It's introduced from Europe. It was brought because it's an, uh, a ground cover that moves quickly. So people found it very desirable but then it's become our enemy. So let me show you how the foliage looks different in the adult form and the juvenile. It was introduced in 1920, uh, 1727 was the year. So it grows in partial shade areas. It loves moist areas. Things it does not like is salt and it doesn't like drought, but it's thriving in our shade and that's why it's taking over habitat that would typically be areas where we find our native plants would like to grow. Here's the adult foliage that you can see right here in the picture pretty easily. Adult without the lobes. Here are the berries. The clusters of flowers are actually very decorative. They're pretty little yellow clusters, star-like clusters. The, these are born in the summer months, the flower, and then these droops, these are technically droops, are born in the fall months, and then they turn this dark purple color. and. They're numerous on this vine. They're gonna be maturing. We're in Maryland. This is gonna be maturing for the next month and the birds will be eating these little black droops. And there is poisonous properties to heterohelix and it will sometimes cause that bird to regurgitate, which serves to help spread the berries and spread the seeds even more. So it's actually, well, it's kind of a pretty little berry on there, isn't it? But the berries do occur on the adult foliage as opposed to the juvenile. So what are some of the controls? Well, if you had a plant like this climbing up your tree, now this tree has not been treated for a long time. Look at the diameter of this guy. See the thickness of this? They say it can get as much as nine inches and woo, well, I can say that's at least seven because I can, I, actually that's seven or eight inches in diameter. I would be cutting those vines off and making a gap between the upper parts, cut at least 12 inches out to stop that from climbing up in the tree. One of the reasons it's a thug is look what it's done to this particular tree. See the dead, see how the top of it's broken out? And that's what I came to this client's house for because she was complaining her ivy's taking over her trees. But she's got some major problems. Look at it climbing out the branches of this maple old maple it's going to break that branch off and then take a look here's the telephone lines here's a phone pole with the end of the driveway just covered i'm sure the electric company doesn't isn't too fond of that here it is climbing up another another tree in her yard all of the trees on this property where she's recently moved are covered look at it all up and down there so if i had it in a blanket form like this at the base of my trees the first thing i've done i've actually just taken hand clippers and i've started to roll that stuff up just whack it whack it and roll it roll it and put it in black garbage bags and cut it all the way off it's been amazing to me when i've had to prune it off how effective that's been at controlling a lot of it but remember the characteristic of an ivy is it makes these adventitious roots here they are on this stem it's not hard to see that it can make a little root at every, not just at a node, but they will arise between the nodes. And that's what makes this vine such a successful one are those adventitious roots. Every little single piece that you cut off, one piece, another little piece there, another, every little piece can root and become a new plant. So if you were rolling it up off the landscape, you'd have to be effective at grabbing all of it. Then if it came back in again, when the plants came back, I would actually resort to an, herba uh, a, an herbicide product for the control of that. Coming in with that, I know we all hate the use of chemicals, but there are places 
where it's just like if I was ill and I was in the hospital, I'd end up with maybe a, a chemotherapy treatment. You know, sometimes there's extreme cases where plants need a chemical treatment, and that would be the case in this this particular yard because it's insane with ivy. So let me show you another method. Over here are these thick stems. Another solution is when you cut these stems and remove them, you can use a concentrated form of an, herb an herbicide, a systemic herbicide. The word systemic means it's absorbing, goes down into the roots. And of course, plants are not absorbing too many things into the root system in the winter months as much as they are in the fall months. So fall would be an even more effective time to be doing this. But I would cut this off and I would cut about a one in, I, I would do a, let me close this. I would cut at least 12 inches out of here and clear that out. And on this naked stem that I have left here, I would put drops of a concentrated herbicide on that fresh cut stem. And I'd go across here and I'd cut every one of the vines off of her tree, leaving a gap and treat every one of those stems. And they would absorb that uh, systemic herbicide and take it down into the roots and kill the plant. You have to do your homework, Master Gardeners, because herbicides work differently. Some of them can actually damage your bark and you don't want that to occur. So that's all the good facts about the problems that we have with ivy. Did I mention what he does? He also can actually smother the plant and take sunlight away from the plant. That can occur because of uh, just shading purposes. Look how high it is up in that maple and it can actually shade the foliage. And that's what's occurring in our woodlands, is this shading and it breaking in the storms, not because it's absorbing nutrients from the tree, but a problematic non-native plant that we as master gardeners need to make sure residents in our state are not buying ivy for their yards. So there you go, Invasive Species Awareness Week.